We're here at the heart of St. James Court, where a fountain stands and serves as a reason to be for a celebrated art show. A century and a half ago, this area served as a sports complex. There were two separate baseball fields, one of which was home to Louisville's charter member team in the National League. And in the years before the Southern Exposition's massive complex was built here, Various sports and entertainments were presented on these grounds. These included ice skating and marvelous skating masquerade balls, early games of football, bicycle racing, and a great Roman hippodrome circus. The Southern Exposition's massive hall was built in 1883, and the expo remained open for four years. In 1888, James Camp produced a series of Shakespeare's plays starring Charles Barrett and Edwin Booth. Afterwards, there were several attempts to subdivide the grounds and sell off the lots. But it wasn't until the 1890s that William H. Slaughter and his partners in the Victoria Land Company, John D. Taggart, John Stites, George Birch, and George H. Moore successfully developed St. James Court. Mr. Slaughter originally conceived of three fountains for the court, but eventually one fountain and two lions were decided upon. Although it's generally said that the fountain came from either London or the J.L. Mott Company of Brooklyn, neither of these is quite correct. No one has explained why William Henry Slaughter, an insurance man born in Bardstown, would choose a London theme for his exclusive residential enclave. Perhaps the inspiration came from his brother, Tom. As a young man, Thomas Hines Slaughter left Louisville, where he'd been working for his older brother, William, to strike out upon the operatic stage. He began his professional career in San Francisco, adopting the stage name of Harry Delorme. He made it big on Broadway, creating the role of Sandor Marinke in Conrad's production of Strauss's The Gypsy Baron. When the Southern Exposition opened, Harry Delorme was in England, performing and traveling productions of Gilbert and Sullivan. In Liverpool, Thomas H. Slaughter married another singer, Miss Adeline Dunham of Atlanta, Illinois. The couple lived in London where their daughter, Gladys, was born. They came home just as William was developing St. James Court and settled in a house there, close to the fountain. As for the Mott Company of Brooklyn, the J.L. Mott Ironworks was definitely responsible for the manufacture of our fountain, but the company was never located in Brooklyn. Until the 20th century, Mott's facilities were based in the Bronx, near the future site of Yankee Stadium, in a neighborhood named after the company, Mott Haven. J.L. Mott made bathtubs for the White House and supplied the iron for the dome of the Capitol building. Reputedly, it was also a piece of Mott's plumbing that Marcel Duchamp turned on its side to create the fountain that turned the art world on its ear. The fountain William H. Slaughter selected for St. James Court came straight out of the Mott Company catalog. J. O. Mott sometimes subcontracted its zinc sculpture work out to the M. J. Selig Company. Selig was located in Brooklyn. Although no one has published a verifiable date for the installation of the St. James Court Fountain, we know it was in place in 1891, when a number of homes were being built around it. In the early years, there was no neighborhood association yet to see to its upkeep, nor were there protections like curbs on the street or a rail around the fountain. By the mid-1950s, our Venus was showing her age. Something needed to be done to not only make immediate repairs, but also to establish a fund for the fountain's continued care. By this time, there was a St. James Court Neighborhood Association, and its leaders, Ethel DuPont and Malcolm Byrd, stepped up to meet the challenge. In 1956, Malcolm Byrd and Bob Smith bought railing from the balcony of the Strand Theater and installed it around the fountain. And the following year, the art show was established, with its proceeds set aside for the upkeep of the fountain and other common areas on the court. From humble beginnings as a clothesline exhibition sale on the court's median,
the St. James Court Art Show has grown to encompass surrounding streets and earn a reputation as one of the world's foremost outdoor art shows. Despite the devotion our Venus Rising was then receiving, by the 1970s more drastic measures were necessary to preserve the fountain at the heart of the court. Like their creators, zinc sculptures have a limited lifespan and it seemed Our Lady and her companion's time was up. The decision was made to manufacture an exact or nearly exact replica made from a more durable material. Locally, Pole Ironworks was contracted to oversee the job with the Fine Arts Sculpture Center of Clarkston, Michigan, handling the actual casting. The old fountain was dismantled and its pieces scattered. On the 14th of September, 1975, a new bronze fountain was unveiled. Through the ensuing years, thanks to the beneficence of the St. James Neighborhood Association, the art show, the artist and the patrons, our fountain maintains its place at the heart of the court. And through your continued support, our Venus rising and its companion's future looks rosy indeed. <laughs>